soldados! ¡Disparen! ¡Encontré a uno de ellos! They didn't help with my sea legs, but they sure as shit felt good. Dead guys looked like soldiers in one of those Central American guerrilla armies. Pirates with a manifesto. Psychos with a dream. That sort of bullshit. I had a way of making any space my own. This was where Marcella was supposed to be sleeping. He'd barely come down to this deck. Passos had the name of the bar where I was drinking my life away. I should have put things together then, instead of waiting for De Silva to walk me through it real slow. The room belonged to Passos, my partner in crime. Or maybe someone else's. The bed was made. I could only guess that Passos was upstairs in the thick of it, whatever it was. to save some valuables. Maybe I could send out an SOS. It certainly wasn't the first time I'd woken up with a hangover, long after a party had turned sour.
The need to get out of the boat's hull and onto the upper deck as soon as possible was countered by the probability of running into another hijacker. I had to move carefully. sucking oxygen from the room. I didn't care if I got shot the second I got out of there. I needed one more gulp of fresh air before I died. It was like the need for a wake-up whiskey after a two-day bender. How to shut off the fuel feeds. Move, Max. shut down one engine, but it didn't make much difference. There. I could breathe again. Now the boat could get back to smelling like suntan oil, stale margaritas, and greed. So this was the famous Panama Canal. We could have gone to the moon while I was passed out and I wouldn't have noticed. While I'd been dead to the world, some of my shipmates were just plain dead. Where had they taken them? It was a different scene than the one I'd stumbled away from. Where was everyone? I still didn't know what the hell happened. I didn't like to think what was behind the door. Booze, coke, pills. You could get whatever party favor you wanted on this vessel. Guys up ahead weren't dealing with passengers like the rest of them. Maybe I should have realized then that this was no ordinary kidnap job. Something on the boat had attracted the sharks.
After I got out of New Jersey, things had flared up again between the Punchinellos and the DeMarcos. Didn't look like things would die down anytime soon. I was gonna have to stay away from the only place I'd ever known. Whatever they were looking for appeared to be gone. Daphne Bernstein, a recent divorcee making the most of her considerable settlement, and Marcella was making the most of her. I didn't... I don't want to think about it. The boat was well appointed. Puta, aqui não há nada! There was something firing these guys other than good old-fashioned socialist zeal. What were they looking for? It didn't make sense. Why would they leave the jewels and rip open the walls? It didn't occur to me just what the other cargo on board could be. on a ghost ship in a ghost canal. The whole thing creeped me the hell out. Daphne's ship was always stocked.
pirates wouldn't get everything. Maybe there was something on the bridge. I checked every other inch of the boat. I spotted Passos and Marcelo. If I'd known back then that they'd been up to no good while I was fighting my way through a band of violent paramilitaries and a worse hangover, I might not have wanted to get over to them so bad. Hey, Passos! At the time, I hadn't thought too much about this. I hadn't thought too much about anything. Now I remember it. It didn't seem quite so kosher. What about, what's her name? Daphne. Uh, do whatever you think is best. I think it's best we try to go find her. Yeah, okay, let's go. La. See, I didn't think Passos was a bad guy. He didn't need to try to save this woman or the crew. We're here. You realize you knew your way around here. They were using that building to get across the canal. Vamos, muévase, muévase. Está ahí, 
Equipment in the truck next to me. It'd be a shame to see it go to waste. up top. I expected to find on a boat full of drunks and bullshit artists I'd been the cabaret act shooting whatever came in front of me was easier than coming to terms with that reality welcoming party.
I needed something to help me adjust to being back on land. It was nice to see a friendly face in Panama. something to help me adjust to being back on land. Americans had a long and checkered history of involvement in Panama. This was my sorry chapter, for what it's worth. Jesus Christ. 
think things would be like this? I should have jumped in that goddamn canal myself and swum my way back to New York. think you were really doing in Panama? I was drinking. People died. Innocent people. Who do you think robbed you? I don't know. I was told it was people who disliked Daphne Bernstein, something about an unpleasant divorce. Her ex-husband worked on Wall Street. Do you think he has easy access to Panamanian death squads? I guess I didn't really think about it. You were smuggling something, weren't you? No, no, no. I mean, I didn't realize it at the time. I, I didn't think too much about it, but yes, Marcelo did drive off with something. I don't know what. I didn't see him until we got to Brazil a week or so later. I think it was money. I think Marcelo and Victor have a friendly banker there in Panama. Your little cruise was to deliver the cash to him because there it's easier to launder. But I thought the Broncos were rich. How do he goes rich? The other two, they live well, but they don't have real money. Victor's campaigns were always financed by his brother. That is the way among certain rich families there. The eldest brother is the king. You know, he gets everything. The other two, not so much. And now Rodrigo's dead. Exactly. And Marcelo, too. It's an awful tragedy for Victor, huh? A man running on a law and order ticket, you know, whose brothers have both been killed in such terrible circumstances. A true patriot. What about Marcelo? Marcelo. Marcelo was an idiot. Were this true, I certainly don't believe he could possibly have known about it. But I do believe some other scheme, you know, some other bullshit. Whatever that cash was, Victor could have talked him into something. I don't know yet. And Passos? Well, Passos is a bum ex-cop. Failed in America. Failed in Sao Paulo. He was surrounded by more money and more poverty than his tiny little head can handle. You think guys like that can't be bought? No, but if... But nothing. He's probably not a bad guy. He's just a man caught in the crossfire of a very rich family. What about me? You. You're the fall guy. The American. Running around, acting like the action hero. Killing lots of people. <laughs> You're a stroke of genius. That ain't how it is. You were an angry ex-cop. You were sitting in a bar with a history of violence and a history of a bad temper. You were perfect. Me and Passos went to the academy together. Did you? I don't fucking know! <clears throat> okay, let's take a drive, Max. You wanna do some good, hmm? You wanna get yourself killed in a good cause? Then I need you to check something out for me. Like what? That incident at the favela today. Some of my officers say a bus drove off some captives. They did, I saw it. But no captives were ever booked. They probably handed them off to the paramilitary death squads, the, uh... Casa Preto? Right. Who did? I don't know, the cops. The other cops, the cops who shoot on sight. The Ufe. Right. Max, you see that building there? The Imperial Palace Hotel? Yeah, that's what it says. People go in there, in large groups, under armed guard. But it isn't a police station, and no one comes out of there. Why don't you just go in and bust the joint, get a warrant? I'm only a cop, Max. <laughs> so you keep saying. <clears throat> Time to find out what was going on here. I didn't fancy booking myself in the presidential suite, so went looking for the basement.
wasn't too excited about the acoustics in this place. A couple of gunshots would sound like I'd walked in here with a goddamn marching band. It wasn't pretty, but I guess none of what was about to happen was gonna be. It was the question I kept on asking myself. How could I have been so blind? I was convinced the Broncos had gotten the wrong man for the job, but maybe De Silva was right. I was the stooge. The bad joke everybody got but me. Either those guys wheeled their trash out on stretchers, or something was seriously wrong here. You can't unsee something, but you can dull the effect. Ufe, was there anything they didn't have a grubby hand in? A few days earlier I'd have called it a coincidence, but I'd written off too many of those already. The Imperial Palace Hotel was a five-star, bonafide shithole. I needed to find out why guests were checking in by the busload and checking out by the bag load. Maybe the service would be better upstairs.
slept in days. I needed something to keep me going. De Silva and I had the same fan club. I knew enough and he knew too much. We'd both become targets. Passos's ID card. It was no great surprise he'd made their hit list, but to discover he was really Colombian? No wonder some locals seemed to laugh at his accent. What else had he lied to me about? I knew this thing was bigger than me. Bigger than the Broncos, but I only had a glimpse of the whole picture. Like looking in the mirror and for an instant seeing what everyone else sees. A bad caricature of a better man. Ufe, that deal at the favela was getting dirtier by the minute. Those bastards were clearly in bed with the crush of Prado. Now we just had to find out why. Starting with a bit of bedtime reading for Mr. Da Silva. When you've lived the kind of life I've lived, reality comes at you through a different lens. But nothing could have prepared me for what was on the other side of that door. I had to get those poor bastards out of there. Get them out of here. Go. Go. Wait. I said get. Serrano. Serrano. He looked pathetic. A man defeated. I walked away and left him to his own personal nightmare. Whatever hell this was De Silva had sent me into, I knew I had to put an end to it. I had no choice but to push on. I didn't understand everything, and I never would, but I understood enough. Sometimes a complicated problem is best tackled with a simple solution.
This was hell on earth. De Silva was no fool. I'd have driven on off into the sunset too if I were him. But I was in too far now. There were still two more floors above. It looked like Victor had won the sympathy vote, found his universal connection to the people, triumph out of tragedy. Part of me couldn't help thinking that had been his plan all along. There it was, the soundtrack to my life. And, for a few seconds, came harmony. Finally. going on here? How, how much do you want? What have you been doing? I am a doctor. I help people. What have you been doing here? It's easy for you. Listen, I know people. They will kill you. I can help you. Trust me. Please, please. What have you been doing? I have a lot of money. Look, look. Lots of money. I do important research, please! Caralho! Caralho! Espera, espera, eu posso explicar tudo! Tudinho! Não, não, por favor! Pelo amor de Deus! Por favor, não me mata! Não, não! Pelo amor de Deus! E ali, Totó! For all Serrano owed me, he'd paid enough. For now, I had bigger debts to call in. Even I could guess what Demolisal meant. That building was condemned in more ways than one. There had to be something I wasn't seeing. locked from the outside.
They had a fucking arsenal in here. It was time to bring this little hellhole to the ground, so I decided to put some of their C4 to good use. Call it evidence for De Silva. Either Victor Bronco and Nevis were doing a lot of charity work together, or this was payment for something else. Were the crotch of Prado in Victor's pocket? Had he tipped them off about the stadium exchange? I had to hurry up before more of those assholes showed up. seen some dark shit in my time, but this was something else. These vermin had gone into a place where life was cheap and found a way to get rich off it. I just wanted to finish this and get far away from here. But then, true to form, more of the rats came out of their holes. At least my visitors have been kind enough to leave the gate open. The time I bought had been going real cheap. If I was going to plant the rest of those explosives, I had to do it now.
was at the top of this house of cards. Now is the time to play my ace. That was the last of the explosives. I just hoped it was enough to bring down the building. And all the evil in it. Mike! Mike! Come to the, come to the mine! Who wants to take a shot? You see what this is? Come on, anybody? Wanna be a hero? I got nothing to lose, let's do it! Que porra que tá acontecendo aqui? Senor Nevis. What the fuck is your problem, man? <laughs> my problem? My problem? Wanna know what my problem is? You're turning humans into glue! That's what my fucking problem is! I don't know what you're talking about, American. All I know is what I hear about you. You bodyguard for the Brancos. They are all dead. You help the poor. Today, many of them dead. You were a proper American hero. At least I fucking tried. Well done with your effort. The whole city is grateful. The great American savior of the poor. That's right. You think you made any difference? You think stopping this legitimate business venture is helping anyone? Legitimate? You're stealing people's organs! We pay for everything! We have the record! Oh, so people can sell their livers? Their hearts? Their eyeballs? You're insane, you sick fuck! We kept people safe in the city! Decent people! Safe! I know a lot of powerful people. Well, your powerful people aren't gonna help you out of this one, buddy.
fuck are you doing here? I came back. I can see that. But why? To save you. Wow, oh, yeah, real hero. Listen, now come with me, Max, to Brazil. Be a chance to play the fall guy in a plot that my boss and brother's hatching to profit from the selling of human organs. Yeah, it'll be perfect for you. What are you talking about? I don't know nothing about human organs, man. Victor and Marcelo are trying to teach Rodrigo a lesson. Get him to loosen the purse strings and the family money. They pressured me into doing it. You wanna die? I came back for you. I did my best. I'm having a kid, Max. I gotta go. Fuck you. Sure. Later. Now, let's go. This thing works. Everything. No, you don't. I'm sorry I couldn't save your sister. I was there. It wasn't your fault. I was paid to protect her, and I didn't. She married into a sick family. Maybe. I... I just wanted to say thank you for giving us a chance to live. I mean, as a family. I hope it all works out for you, for all of you. Thank you. Don't be too long. Well, buddy, that's it. Where are you guys gonna go? Uh, I don't know, maybe back to New York. Uh, maybe down to Argentina. Giovanna has family in Salvador. Maybe we'll just stay there. Yeah, I got business to take care of. Uh, I I'm sorry I, I dragged you into this. I, I know... Uh, I, I know it was very wrong. It's all right, it's done. But hey, I'm having myself a fun old time. Maybe this is how things had to be. Figure I... Might as well die in the sunshine as die in the snow. Look, I'm sorry I'm leaving. I, I got a kid coming here. You know how it is. I know how that is. You know, I... I almost didn't say goodbye to you. I said to myself, maybe this guy will put a bullet in me. <laughs> maybe I will. But not right now. Thank you. Try to look after yourself, Max, huh? Life is worth living. If you say so, pal. I thought I was going to have to witness another murder. <laughs> nah. Not him. You ready? I guess. Okay. I've uh, looked through this information you gathered. And it's not very nice. What is it? It's the Ufe. The famous Mr. Becker. Friend of Victor Bronco. <laughs> yes. And a contributor to his campaigns. A government employee, of course. And? A weapons dealer. A murderer. This was known. A dealer in human organs. This wasn't known. A proper gentleman. Mm, sure. So you're gonna bring him down? <laughs> yes, because I want to lose my wife and my children and then get killed myself. All that after watching him walk free. Tell me what has to be done. Well, officially, there's uh, nothing I can do. And unofficially? Well, we can always try something a little more creative. Creative? De Silva had promised me a 10 o'clock showcase. I had to make sure I was on stage and ready for my close-up. Diga a Becker. Que vim para ele. Ah! Vai, vai, vai. Eu 
ajudar dela, meu. Ei, quem é essa cara aí? Convidado nosso. Quebra esse otário aí. Deixa comigo, dá uma lição nele. <risos> então, o pai dela não desiste. Patrão, filha da puta! Atrás de inocentes! Por que é que você vai ser mais você contigo? Toma uma aqui! É aqui que você vai me acontecer, caralho! Tá pensando o quê? Hã? Onde é que você vem? Fica aí, caralho! Eu! Se fudeu, filha da puta! Otário! Olha aí, otário! Deixa eu sair daqui, velho! Ô, ô, ô! Segura a porta aí! Ah, eu vi uma outra versão. Você tá aqui, ô! Olha, mas eu vi aquela parada lá, hein? Morou. Yeah. Yeah, Fazendo aqui? What are you doing here? I, I don't understand. I can't hear you. What are you what doing you here? Doing you here? Hit me in the ear. Hey, answer me. What are you doing here? Back in the precinct after all this time. Time to find out what the hell was going on. Nothing resembling good times lay beyond that gate, but I was going to have to face the music sooner or later. I guess our little stunt helped some other civic-minded people raise valid concerns about community relations. Their faces said it all. I was on their side, but how could they know that? If they came through that door, I'd be leaving as a human shield and never leaving at all. Luckily for me, for once the police arrived just in time. It sounded like all hell was breaking loose. Whatever nonsense De Silva had pulled, it seemed to be working. Time to leave this palace before somebody treated me to an extended stay. The last few prisoners were trapped in here, and more presently, it seemed I was too.
their body armor. I had mine. It was Monday's arrest log, as far as I could tell. And no sign of anybody from Nova Esperanza. All those poor bastards have been checked straight into the Imperial Palace Hotel. kid had had the right idea. There was no point bouncing bullets off that thing. I decided I'd try to pick up where he left off. And then immediately regretted that decision. Wasn't this nice? The perfect end to a perfect trip. If someone had told me six months ago this was where my life was headed, I'd have ordered a double of whatever they were drinking. Drunk it, then blown my head off. Any time the prison riot had bought me was starting to run out, I had to keep moving. Another dark, rainy night. Another police station. Another futile crusade for amends. Time moves forward, and nothing changes. Every bastard in the joint must have known I was on the loose by now. I couldn't afford to waste any more time. Seemed the anti-drug squad had a few habits of its own. Police food, the same crap the world over. But I could reminisce about the old days later. For now, there was more pressing matters to deal with. Becker's blood money from the good doctor. Serrano had canceled one side of that transaction. The other was on me. They'd come from the control room. It looked like the security cameras were still running.
Luckily, I wasn't the only cop with a pill problem. I figured I should check out the security monitors while I had the chance. It looked like the prisoners were giving them a run for their money. That's what happens when you hand some roided up halfwit a commando uniform with special on the front and let him ride around his hometown in a tank playing soldiers. Sooner or later, someone's gonna decide he's not so special. There were a bunch more in the elevator tooled up like they were about to roll into Fallujah. And of course, they were headed my way. If the heat was rising, that meant I was getting closer to the source. I had to keep moving. Luckily, I wasn't the only cop with a pill problem. I saw the elevator doors were open. If there was one thing I learned since being in Sao Paulo, it was that me and the local elevators were not a good mix. Whatever depressing fate lay on the other side of those doors, there was no point in putting it off any longer. I'd killed more cops than cholesterol, and still no sign of Becker. It wasn't the first time it dawned on me I should probably have gone over the plan in more detail, but it was too late for that now. If I didn't hurry, Becker would be long gone. Sao Paulo's own David and Goliath. I'd pinned De Silva as a coward, but he'd risked more than anyone. He'd never taken a bribe. AUP. Those were the guys who jumped the yacht in Panama. 
And what was this? Had the Brazilian cops tipped them off about the money? I still didn't know how I'd gone from drinking myself numb in New Jersey to looting corpses in Brazil. But this was where I was, 5,000 miles from a home I couldn't go back to on another suicide mission to clean up a mess that wasn't even mine. The CS were all but out of business in Sao Paulo, and suddenly Becker and Victor looked like local heroes in the war on crime. They'd really gotten their money's worth outsourcing their problems onto me. My old pal Serrano. We'd both been unwitting clowns in this sorry circus. Part of me hoped he'd made it out of that hotel alive. I didn't recognize the guy. Maybe this was the new slum king Da Silva had talked about. A throne never stays empty for long. Fame at last. It was no great surprise I'd made Ufe's most wanted list. I hadn't done much to improve the reputation of Americans abroad over the past few weeks. And there they were, my illustrious employers. Three dead and still, every chance I'd go four for four. None of this was going to look good on the resume. And I was in good company. Howell Passos, sent up north to find a washed up gringo who would act tough and play dumb. Boy, did he ever deliver. I'd spent my career dozing off in the briefing room. Now wasn't the time. starting to feel as if I'd never leave that place. Like one of those nightmares where you keep running and running only to discover you're chasing yourself. Nothing I was gonna find in there could make a difference now. I had all the evidence I needed. This wasn't good. I needed to find a way out of that stairwell and fast. My eyes and throat burned, but at least I could breathe. I was trying to work out what direction I was headed in when I discovered some more Brazilian architecture not designed for the American physique. was the tape from the Bronco security system. Jesus, it was that guy. I had seen him in the favela, Bachmeyer, Becker's right-hand man. His time would come, him and Becker. Seu dinheiro representa o seu futuro. Mantenha o seguro com o Banco Boitatá para a sua casa, o seu carro ou o seu negócio. Venha falar com o Boitatá. Threatens to be the worst volcanic eruption in Ecuador for 40 years. 
The epidemic of violence that grips Brazil's major cities continues to worsen. On Monday, a massive gun battle between drug gangs and special forces police in the favela of Nova Esperanza left 150 people dead or critically injured. Mayoral candidates were divided on their reactions to the altercation. Camila Machado blamed the police force for acting without restraint and effective government oversight. Victor Branco, whose eldest brother was murdered last week and whose youngest brother is missing and is feared to have been an innocent victim in Monday's gun battle, issued a statement calling for more funding for law enforcement and vowing to stop at nothing to make Sao Paulo safe again. In Buenos Aires, the world's largest chorizo caused quite a stir. I'd seen enough. It was time to bring this nightmare to an end. get that tape out of my head. Why had Ufe killed Rodrigo? I wasn't going to find any answers in the forensics lab. I had to push on. Hey, pal. Nice to see you. Vai pra casa, gringo de merda. I don't think we've been properly introduced. I know who you are. And you should have killed me in the office when you had the chance. There's still time, meu camarada! Still nothing to show for it. I felt like I was detaching, that maybe this was revenge for something else, something buried deep in the past. It was a little late to be thinking about precautions, but something told me this shit show was barely through the warm-up act. Rodrigo, Giovanna, Passos, everyone who'd meant anything was gone. Like so many times before, I'd found myself alone, 
locked on a course of destruction. It was at my worst when I was at my best. It felt like I was going around in circles, getting further away from the truth. I had to find my way out of there. Becker and Bachmeyer had taken their pound of flesh and sold it on the black market. Now I was coming for mine. Só tô esperando a confirmação do outro grupo, mas o gringo já deve estar tá morto agora. Senhor, ele não parece estar tá morto! Filho da puta, pelo amor de Deus!
off to interfering things you do not understand. Oh, I understand plenty, asshole. How stupid can one man be? This is where it ends! I couldn't get a direct shot. I was gonna have to get creative. It was a waste of bullets. His cover was too good. What are you hoping to achieve here? This was the passkey to Becker's office. I was close to the end of all this, and I could feel it. Becker! <laughs> Something funny about dying? I felt like the avenging angel. I looked like a fat, bald dude with a bad temper. You disgusting piece of shit! I know! Everything! Not everything, my friend. Let go of him, Max. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> There's a good fellow. Well, well, well. Victor, I was wondering when you'd reappear out of whatever slimy hole you live in. <laughs> I'd like to just say, Max, I just want to say thank you for all your hard work my family, and for cleaning up that horrible mess with the Crasha Preto for us. You know I'm tough on crime. I give you a bonus, but I think you just fritter it away. Becker, take his gun. Thomas, you feel the poop! They had barred the door. My only hope was to chase them down. I knew they'd be leaving town, and my guess is they would try to fly out of here. Rich people love to fly away. God damn it! Okay, Max. Now you check the main terminal. I'm gonna go and look for the Bronco plane by the hangar, okay? Let's do it. You keep an eye out in there. You know Becker's gonna have some guys in there watching out for you. Yep. So, of course, I knew they were looking for me. But the airport was about the only place a fat gringo might blend in. Well, there or a sex club. Hey. Hey. My delusions of disguise lasted around two seconds. They were out in force. And they were out for me. But then, I was out for them, too. Every last one of those bastards.
felt like my vacation was coming to an end. Only I wasn't heading home with a sunburn, a bag full of duty free, and a dose of VD. I was making a bet that would put me in handcuffs or a body bag. These were Becker's guys. Him and Victor had a private airport to go with their private army and their private jet. I might have known you'd turn out. Sorry. You heading home? Oh, I, I am here to pick up my daughter, but I imagine she's stuck on the plane. Uh, what are you up to? I don't know. Trying to make a difference. Giving back. Yeah, that's what you call it. Take care. Yeah. Judgment with a smile. You can't beat it. Nothing was happening back here. I had to get to where the action was. This was the back office. They'd be on their way to the nearby lounge. The doors lead in the direction of the main terminal. The customer restroom. I could get through to the departure gates up ahead. There were Ufe all over the airport and civilians were being moved out. Looking at it one way, shutting down the airport for their escape was a weird sort of compliment, but one I didn't need.
opened at the other end of the departure lounge. Maybe they were in the next terminal. I'd keep looking until Victor sent me a postcard from Miami. I meant to end this how I'd begun it. Heavily medicated. There weren't any other flights clogging up air traffic control. Victor would be clear for takeoff as soon as he was ready. down the escalators. like there'd be any trams leaving until the power was on.
airport's always made me nervous. It worked. The trams were running again. Maybe they'd take me to my gate. Maybe they'd bring more guys wanting to whack me. Maybe both. I felt like I might be able to recharge for a second. At least until we pulled into the station and met more murderous assholes. Son of a bitch! It didn't work out like that. Of course, there'd be a tram full of goons trying to derail me. the ticket for the Max Payne Express. out on the joke and it was a real good one I'd only just gotten on board. I had to salvage what I could and see what was waiting for me. This was my stop. It had taken me right into the heart of it. Becker's gimps were everywhere, so he and Bronco must be close. A smart move would have been sticking with De Silva and going straight to the hangar. But when was I ever about smart moves? I'm a dumb move guy. Hey Max, we'll drive onto the runway. No thanks. Let me walk in the main entrance. 
I'll put a big shit-eating grin on my face and let these assholes take turns trying to kill me. That's my style, and it's too late in the day to hope for change. Boy, were they throwing numbers at this problem. But then, I'd chosen to be here. I wanted this. Was it redemption? Not really. It was pathetic desperation, and not much else. The further in I got, the more guys I saw. Becker wasn't running a police force. He was running an army. These guys were better trained and better equipped than anyone I'd seen out here. And I'd seen some mean sons of bitches. The mission was screaming suicide, but I didn't give a damn. At least I'd die being a pain in the ass. <coughs> there the bastards were, sneaking off in their rich kid's toy. I ain't got the world to go, Becker! Mr. Payne, I believe you had something to say to me! Mate ele! Mate ele agora! Não! 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 was it. It was almost over. So I guess I'd become what they wanted me to be. A killer. Some rent-a-clown with a gun who puts holes in other bad guys. Well, that's what they had paid for, so in the end, that's what they got. Say what you want about Americans, but we understand capitalism. You buy yourself a product and you get what you pay for. And these chumps had paid for some angry gringo without the sensibilities to know right from wrong. Here I was, about to execute this poor bastard like some dime store angel of death, and I realized they were correct. I wouldn't know right from wrong if one of them was helping the poor and the other was banging my sister. One card left to play. Just get me close. Oh, Look, there's a whole team of them. Passenger side. Come on, Max. They're gonna kill us. So 
close it up! They don't want us getting down this one way! We can't get much of else in the sky, so they're trying to attack! I don't get the sense the citizens' rights are high on their agenda right now. The Earth is dead, Max! Stick it up! Right in front! I'm normally a behind the gas kind of cop! Only I... Enjoy a trial and a spell in prison. Let him suffer. Trust me. <laughs> you know I'll walk. You'll walk <laughs> with a lift. <laughs> Justice. 